One of the most common issues that I see with people is that they lose their motivation to stay sober and they keep going back and forth, getting a few days or a couple weeks in and then drinking again. We search for inspirational quotes on Instagram and wonder why everyone else can figure it out and not us. But your lack of motivation to stay sober is not because you're a loser or a weak person. It's just like with everything else that I say, it's based on how alcohol changes the brain. This month's workshop in my Living a Sober Powered Life community was all about motivation. I explained where motivation comes from, how drinking alcohol changes our brain to make us less motivated and effort averse over time, how the brain determines if something is worth the effort, and I shared three in the moment strategies to stay on track when your motivation fades, and three ways to prevent your motivation from fading longer term. So please enjoy this little clip from the workshop, and if you would like to join us for future workshops, then the link will be in the show notes. And there's also a little blooper of Rudy attending the workshop at the end of this clip. So I hope that you enjoy that. So let's go. So I wanted to talk about motivation this month because I think that's a common issue is people will, they'll quit drinking and they're really excited about it and it seems great and then the motivation kind of fades after a bit and then we drink again and we're wondering how to keep this motivation thing going or you might even have the accelerated version of it where you go through the whole thing all in one day. Where you wake up and you're super motivated, like, let's go, let's do this, I'm changing my life. And then throughout the day, like your motivation disappears and goes away until the end of the day, you're doing your usual drinking after work situation and you're like, what the hell, man? Why am I always doing this? We search for inspiration a lot on social media and we're looking to get inspired and that can sometimes make us feel a little burst of motivation, but that's very short lived. Uh, Motivation comes a lot from dopamine. So just like with drinking, when you drink, there's a big dopamine release and then your brain remembers, oh, this felt really good or I had really bad anxiety and then I drank and it went away. I'm going to remember that I did this. Or like I had a terrible day at work and I drank and now it's not a huge problem anymore. So I'm going to remember that this was a solution. So then the next time you're presented with whatever those cues are, your brain starts releasing dopamine to try to tell you like, hey, this thing, alcohol, Remember, it fixed this problem the last hundred times that you had this problem. So that's where motivation is coming from. Dopamine is going to set off seeking behavior. So it starts getting released before you even drink. Like the cue happens, dopamine is being released, and then it's like priming your mind to anticipate the reward of drinking and what it's going to do for you. And it sets off a craving, aka seeking behavior. So that's how I like to think about motivation, just as like dopamine being released into the brain. And because alcohol releases so much dopamine, it can really motivate us to seek out alcohol when times are tough. Um, And there have been studies actually on like dopamine and levels of motivation. And I'm going to get to this more shortly. But dopamine levels will determine how you view something. Like, you know how some people will see a challenge and they can always look on the bright side of it or think that it's like worth the effort and it's fun to have a challenge and other people will look at a challenge and they're just negative all the time. They only see the struggles or how much effort it's going to take. That all comes down to dopamine as well and what it's doing in the brain. So with drinking, because it releases so much dopamine, the brain gets used to it and starts to try to adjust. Just like with anxiety, 
if you're a podcast listener with anxiety over time, you don't get the same nice relaxation effect from one drink and then you need to have more and more and more. And then when you quit and you go into withdrawal, there's a lot more anxiety because your brain has adapted. Your brain's going to adapt in the same way with all of the dopamine that's being released. So your brain's going to make some adjustments so alcohol doesn't have like as big of an impact anymore. And we know about that and we know that's why we feel like crap. And we've talked in some of our meetings and in posts about just feeling like blah or um, lack of joy in sobriety. And some people have reflected on how they're able to have gratitude for like little stupid things like flowers and sun looking nice in the morning. And that's all dopamine too. But the part that I think we don't realize as much is when you're depleting your dopamine from drinking so much and you're conditioning your brain to be desensitized, you're also making yourself less and less and less and less motivated. Because remember, dopamine is what makes us motivated to do something. Dopamine gets released so that we go get some food and water to keep ourselves alive. So when we're depleting our dopamine system through all of this drinking, we're also depleting just our general levels of motivation. So I want you to kind of see it that way. Because when we quit drinking and we have naturally low levels of dopamine, we might be focusing on how hard it seems to I really have to do this forever. Like what about this vacation or this wedding I said I, I was going to go to or the summer? Like we focus on how hard it seems and like all the things that we're giving up by quitting drinking. And that's a dopamine thing too. When you first quit, it just seems like really hard, not rewarding, like it's so much work and we just focus on like how much effort everything takes. So this is called being like effort averse. And I think that we really get used to this cycle because every time we have even the slightest amount of discomfort or like the example with cleaning, that was a perfect one. Like you come home and you're just like, oh, I don't want to do anything. I'm, I had a long day. And then you have some alcohol and now all of a sudden you can do stuff. We get used to not putting effort into anything. And then it becomes really hard to wait for the benefits because when you quit drinking, some I had a giant pink cloud like right away, but most people I've seen like don't usually have that or they'll have it for like a month and then it'll wear off. If you have to wait for the benefits to happen, it's really hard to feel that it's worth it. And because things don't feel worth it to us and we're not motivated to do them because of this dopamine depletion and desensitization, we drink again because that's a shortcut to getting what we want and we're not used to putting effort into anything and it's not worth it. And we focus on all of, oh my God, Rudy is coming out. He never comes out. Good boy, Rudy. Yeah. Hi, Rudy. Oh, do you hear him crying? Let me see if I can pick him up. Hold on. Come here, Rudy. Hey, Rudy. Oh, he's so brave. Thank you for checking out this workshop preview. And as a reminder, if you want to join us for future workshops, that happens in my Living a Sober Power Life community. We have a private community, a monthly workshop, and about 12 meetings a month or three-ish per week. We would love to support you in there and you can get more information in the link in the show notes.